While being held down by six strong men, the doctor swiftly started the amputation of a soldier's leg, just below the knee. Instantly, the man began the horrible cries and screams that would last approximately two minutes until the doctor had successfully done the unthinkable, amputation without any pain relief. This was a regular occurrence when medical surgery was last resort to death's door. It wasn't until October 16, 1846 that one man conquered the feeling of pain, one of the greatest discoveries in medical history. William Thomas Green Morton, a Boston dentist, used the lasting effects of the drug, ether, to perform the first public demonstration of anesthesia at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Gilbert Abbott, a printer, came to the Mass General with a vascular tumor on his jaw. Dr. John Collins Warren, a highly skilled surgeon, performed the surgery while Morton used a specially designed glass inhaler containing an ether-soaked sponge to administer the drug. As he awoke from the anesthetic, Abbott immediately informed the doctors that he had felt no pain. Dr. Warren turned to the audience and said, Gentlemen, this is no humbug. This remarkable discovery immensely changed the perception of pain not only in Boston, but also around the world. The discovery of ether was a major turning point in history because it saved thousands of people's lives, relieved people from the excruciating pain, and helped doctors discover new drugs and methods for surgeries. Pain has been the world's greatest enemy for thousands of years. People were terrified of surgery because of the dreadful experience and excruciating pain. Doctors performed surgeries in high towers so people couldn't hear the piercing screams. One elderly Boston physician compared surgery to the Spanish Inquisition. The yells and screams most horrible in my memory now after an interval of so many years. Surgeons had to perform the surgeries in one or two minutes because patients couldn't last through a very lengthy procedure. Death was said to be a better option than any type of surgery. Ancient civilizations all over the world suggested countless ways to temporarily relieve pain. The Chinese, Indians, Greeks, Egyptians, and Romans used the healing power in plants. These plants, such as opium, hemp, marijuana, and cocoa leaves, were effective but considered impure, which made them very unpredictable. Doctors also use alcohol, such as whiskey and wine, to ease the pain. Techniques such as hypnosis and acupuncture were used. However, these techniques sometimes took hours to prepare and were not very successful for relieving pain. Many doctors during this time drilled holes into a person's skull, also known as tremphening, to relieve migraines and seizures. Some cultures tried to numb the body by cutting off a person's circulation or ice in the areas that were going to be cut open. Although these methods were used, none of them completely relieved pain, and the search for new methods went on for many years. From 1821 to 1846, only 333 surgeries were performed at the Mass General, barely one case per month. These surgeries were performed as a last resort because death was imminent. Religion played a major part in the relief of pain. In some cultures, many thought going through the pain of childbirth and surgeries would please God. Illnesses and pains in the body were supposedly attacks of the evil spirits. Praying would be the only way to ask for forgiveness and to relieve the pain. During that time, pain relief could not advance because of these social perceptions, and any type of pain relief would be disobeying God. Only a short time after, advancements that were made during the scientific revolution helped with surgeries. Scientists observed the structure of the body to continue their search in new medicines and techniques to relieve pain. Ether, a widely known drug, had been around for hundreds of years, but it was never used to relieve pain as an anesthetic. A doctor from Jefferson, Georgia, Crawford W. Long, first discovered this violet liquid after attending a laughing gas party. He noticed that many people, while under the influence of the drug, were bumping into walls but felt no pain. Long usually had performed his surgical demonstrations using nitrous oxide, a drug similar to ether. After much experimentation, he came to the conclusion that ether could be used as an anesthetic. He performed the first surgical operation using ether in 1842, and remarkably, his operations were successful each time after. Unfortunately, because Long lived in a small town and didn't perform many surgeries, he never published his discovery. 
Long demonstrated his operations many times, and immediately other doctors tried to claim credit. Among these doctors were Charles T. Jackson and William T. G. Morton. Jackson, a professor from Harvard, was eager to test ether and lay his claim to the discovery. It was Jackson that suggested to Morton to use ether as an anesthetic. Morton, in turn, spent months experimenting with the substance and noticed its astounding effects on a tooth extraction he performed. Another doctor, Horace Wells, who was partnered with Morton, studied the effects of nitrous oxide. In a public demonstration, Wells gave nitrous oxide to the patient, but the surgery was unsuccessful. The audience yelled, Humbug! Humbug! William T. G. Morton was named the true discoverer after his public demonstration in Boston. The public demonstration was held in the Ether Dome, a large room for observing surgeries. On October 16, 1846, he administered the ether and rendered his patient unconscious. Dr. John Collins Warren, a highly respected surgeon, successfully removed the tumor from the patient's jaw. When the patient awoke, he stated that he felt no pain during the operation. The pivotal moment in the history of Mass General is the public demonstration of anesthesia. And when you think about the impact that that's had on human suffering, there probably isn't another event of that magnitude that can be identified cleanly in the history of medicine. The news of the operation quickly spread not only throughout the nation, but throughout the world. It was a huge success. Ether had become so popular that Morton tried to rename his discovery to Lefion, but the name never caught on. After 1846, more than 10,000 patients came to the hospital for surgery. This discovery not only saved thousands of people's lives, but it also helped the doctors to know that their patients would have pain-free surgeries. It freed the surgeons of guilt that the pain inflicted on the patients. For once, it gave them endless possibilities to perform whatever surgery was necessary for the patient, with no limitations, possibilities that they can only dream of. And for the first time ever, pain had been conquered. At this time, many doctors were trying to come up with new alternatives for ether. Approximately one year after, another doctor, James Young Simpson, was inspired by Morton's discovery and introduced a drug called chloroform, which was thought to be an alternative to ether. The drug worked in small doses and had a more appealing smell. This push for new discoveries demonstrates how anesthetics have evolved throughout the years. On April 7, 1853, a man named Dr. John Snow gave chloroform to Queen Victoria for the birth of her seventh son, Prince Leopold. The use of chloroform quickly became popular because people felt that if it was good enough for the Queen, it was good enough for the general public. Throughout the Civil War, anesthetics were used regularly at hospitals. Many people were in need of surgeries at this time. In 1864, a surgeon wrote, how much have the horrors of the battlefield and the hospital been diminished by the use of ether and chloroform? Today, some of the same drugs discovered years ago are still used. Our current drugs are much safer for the patients and have fewer side effects than the ether and chloroform that were used in the past. And still today, doctors are in search for the perfect anesthetic. Pain management has become a specialty in all hospitals. Doctors today have invented new technologies to enhance the safety of procedures. These new technologies can monitor the patient's heart rate and dosage of the drug. 25 years ago, the risk for complications from anesthesia was about 1 in 5,000. Thanks to new technology and safety advancements, the risk is just 1 in 200,000. The discovery not only saved lives, but it gave doctors new opportunities to make advancements in science and medicine. From ancient times to present day, anesthesia has evolved tremendously. But if it wasn't for the discovery of ether, the world may never have conquered surgical pain. And still to this day, every October 16th, Ether Day is celebrated at the Mass General Hospital as being one of the most prolific findings in medical history.